my first motivation came from being the best motherfucker in the world. My second motivation is I gotta do it for the motherfucking fans because these guys believe in me and they need me. And to get some pussy. Getting a pussy is good too. <laughs> Deke's been here since the beginning. So Deke came here, he was just, you know, just a guy that wanted to get in shape and he turned into a, a worldwide name and he's very popular. He's always traveling, he's all over the world, he's very popular. I started working out not for, you know, to win the Olympia. I started working out because I want a confidence, I want to look a certain way. I want to be 220 with abs. I don't want to be 175 pounds with abs. It's not gonna happen. The best feeling in the world is when you first buy a t-shirt and you're able to fill out the sleeves, you know, and your chest is pushing out against the t-shirt. You know, if I lose 200 pounds, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna like the way I look. I'm not gonna have confidence. I'm not gonna be happy. The truth is, I was told by the president of the IFBB that if I want to continue competing in the Arnold or the Olympia next year, what I could improve on is losing 10 more pounds. And that's why I made a decision to go to Classic Physique because there's no way I'm gonna lose 10 more pounds. There was two months when I didn't even wanna compete. You know, after Olympia, I was like, whatever, man, I'll just go back to being a fitness model. And then I was thinking about Classic Physique. The more and more I saw the people that are winning, the more and more I was like, I can beat this guy. And then the next guy, I can beat this guy. How's this, this shift to the um, classic uh, working out so far? You, how you, how you feeling about it? It's good. Finally get to eat, train heavy. You saw me men's physique. I was doing three hours of training. Yeah. Oh, I was just losing, 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 like eating myself away. Mm -hmm. You saw me two weeks out. I look like unbeatable, you know, but then I go from 205 to 180 and I just yeah. right out the window because I can't be 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't want to be 170 pounds anymore. No. You know, I've outgrown the division. Yeah. You know, so it's either I stop competing in men's physique and I don't compete. Yeah. Or I, I force were... myself to grow. Yeah, you were always on the cusp. Yeah, always, yeah. 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 So, I mean, this is perfect for you. Yeah. I was yeah. training here. Steve Weinberger comes up to me. I don't even know who Steve Weinberger is, you know, and uh, now I know who he is. He's like one of the most powerful men in the industry. Hey, man, you look great. You should do a show. Nah, man, I do this shit for me. I don't want to compete. One month later, yo man, come on. You do very well, do my show. Nah, bro, that shit's for gay guys, bro. I'm not getting on stage naked, oiled up and tan and shit. That shit's gay. And then, like, I can't never say no to a woman. So Beth Francis came up to me, she's like, I got this show, you'll be great. You got great arms, you got great physique. Please do it. I did it, I didn't do cardio, I didn't do diet. I didn't even shave my body, you know, I went on stage. I didn't even know how to pose, I didn't even know what I was doing. I did it, I got second place. And I, I was in the car ride home and I, I started laughing to myself. My girlfriend's like, what's wrong? It's like, yo, I didn't even try and I got second. If I tried, I could have been the best. I could have got first. So I made a commitment right then and there in that car ride home from Brooklyn to be the best guy in the world at this sport. Congrats, how's it feel? Good, man, yeah. good. Just getting ready for next week. Good, man. Awesome, you're gonna win that too. We'll see. Yeah. No, you're gonna win. We'll see. How's everyone good? How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, sweetie. Hey. How you doing? Pretty good, thank you. All ready for this weekend. Want to come stop in, say hello, have you take a look. Okay, how do you feel? I feel great, I feel great. Want another Pittsburgh repeat? I'm shooting for it, hope so. That's the plan. Been working hard since we got back and... You look good for what I said. I appreciate it. I should be a, a tad better if things go well. Great. So, yeah. If you got a minute, take yeah, a let's look. Go. All right, thank you. A double bicep. In my humble opinion, the best way I could describe classic physique is it's bodybuilding closer to the golden era of the late 70s, the 70s, 80s. So it's, it's bodybuilding with different trunks. We don't wear the tiny, tiny trunks. We wear shorts a little bit bigger. We don't have front lat spread, rear lat spread, and side tricep. We had front double bicep, 
back double biceps, side chest, abdominal, and thigh. You know, the only thing is now, like, it's starting to look like classic bodybuilding. It doesn't look like a physique division at all. It looks like just uh, guys that were too big for bodybuilding, they're coming down. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it's more than that, though. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, physique. I mean, physique is just a word. It means what, what you look like. Mm. But it's just a name. It's just like figure is just yeah. a name. What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, figure, you talk about girls' figure and men's physique. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about bodies, that's all. Yeah. A bodybuilder has a bodybuilder muscular physique, physique, you yeah. know, and a physique competitor has a little mm. bit less muscular physique. It's just you've got parameters now. You, you know, you've limited the size that the, the guy can be according to his height. For every height, there's a, a cap for weight. So you can't weigh, a, you know, whatever you want at any height. We all compete together. But for instance, me, over 5'10", I'm 5'10 and a quarter. Over 5'10 to 5'11, my cap is 205. So I can weigh up to 205 pounds. Just lower your arms a little bit. I think a little lower. When you bring them up, your lats pop out a little more. You see that? Yeah. Everything evolves, especially in America, bigger, stronger, faster. Um, bodybuilding has evolved. The athletes have gotten bigger and they've gotten more conditions. See, the norm back then was a little bit of a smoother look because that's what guys were, were, uh, were obtaining. You know, Arnold wasn't shredded. Arnold wasn't super dry. If, if you brought Arnold's conditioning, no disrespect, Arnold's one of my favorites, but if you brought Arnold's conditioning today, you know, I think people would say he's a little under condition. It's an aesthetic look and uh, it's, it's overall symmetry they're looking for, conditioning, shape, and presentation. It's a great pose. Fits your body perfectly. Thank you. This is what classic physique's supposed to look like. Get a good look at it. And this is what women's physique's supposed to look like. I'm sitting with classic and women. <laughs> Thank you. Who's luckier than me? Thank you. You look great. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. I appreciate it. It's not about how much you weigh on a scale. It's not about how much you're bench pressing. It's not how much you're squatting. It's about how do you look on stage? Because none of the judges have a scale. None of the judges are measuring your biceps. Yep. It's an illusion. It's a game of illusion. That's how, you know, Frank Zane was able to beat all these guys that are bigger than him. It's illusion. It's symmetry. It's proportions. If you see the guys that qualified, Danny Hester, Dream Charles, um, Sam McWay, they look thick as fuck. But you know what? Their waist is thick as well. And I have something that no matter how hard they try, no matter how hard they train, no matter how hard they diet, no matter what they do, their waist isn't gonna look smaller than mine. I could grow and catch up to them in terms of thickness, but they can never come down and shrink their waist like I have. I'm 100% confident that when I stand next to these guys, it's gonna look like they're my children. You know? <laughs> Push. Four more. Four. Come on. Three. Three. Slow. Up slow. One more for good luck, come on. Up, down slow. Good. Good. Almost done. Squeeze. Good. Are you ready to lean? Of course. You know that's where my focus is. I know. Come on, motherfucker. Come on, bro. Ooh. Oh, my God. Come on. It's a very dark sport, and unless you're willing to go through the darkness, you know, you're not going to be a champion. You see guys that are smiling in the preps and they're happy in the gym, those are the guys getting fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. The guys getting one, two, three is the guys that are fucking really going through problems, you know? 
where they can't wake up, where, you know, they can't spend time with the family, where they, you know, they got to break up with the girlfriends because the pressure is on, where they open up Instagram and you feel like fucking beating the shit out of somebody who says that, you know, someone looks better than you, or, you know, even the opposite, when people praise you too much, you know, that hurts too, you know, because people tell you you're the best, and then you start to believe that you're the best, so then you get in here and you stop at rep number nine instead of going to 10, or, you know, you stop your cardio at 44 minutes instead of doing the extra minute. You know, because people tell you the best and they brainwash you. The guy who says level-headed is gonna win, you know? It says, fuck you, I don't care. You know, you say I'm gonna win, it don't mean shit. That don't mean I'm gonna win. You know, you say I'm gonna lose, it don't mean shit. I'm gonna work twice as hard, I'm gonna win. I'm willing to die for what I want. You know what I mean? Like, I love this so much, I'm willing to die. I don't care if it kills me. This is the same mindset Ronnie Coleman has. Same mindset any chicken has. They're willing to die for the craft. Come on, bro. I walk down the street, they call me Mr. Olympia. And when I tell them I didn't win, they like think I'm joking. It's like, what, you didn't, what are you talking about? You didn't win. You, yeah, you won. I was like, no, I didn't win. Come on. Now I just go with it. When they tell me I'm Mr. Olympia, I say, yeah, I am. So, because it's going to happen. I'm not going to leave this earth until I win the Mr. Olympia.